QuickBooks Online 2023. Class tracking versus projects versus location tracking versus tags versus sub customers or jobs overview. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file. Remember the two ways you may be able to practice with QuickBooks Online, possibly for free, is one, utilize the free 30-day trial often offered by Intuit. Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks. Best way to get there, I believe, is to go to the Intuit website, intuit.com, search for QuickBooks, and then I would go all the way to the bottom of the page where they have the products down here and then search for QuickBooks Online and then you'll be able to see hopefully at this point in time the free 30-day trial here and this little toggle button for the free 30-day trial here. The second option is to utilize the QuickBooks Online test company file. Best way to find it is to just go to your favorite search engine and type in QuickBooks Online test company file. If you want the two open at the same time, then you're going to need to support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Use a different browser. If you're using Google Chrome, you can then also use the incognito mode to have them open at the same time, which you could find by going to the three dots and go to the new incognito window, opening an incognito browser, type in QuickBooks Online test company file, and then search for the option that has into it the owner of QuickBooks in the URL. Now we're gonna be in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and then switching the views on down below. Now we want to take a look at some of those cool tools QuickBooks Online provides us, allowing us to better track and categorize our data, including class tracking, projects, location tracking, tags, and sub-customers, which used to be called jobs. Although these tools give us a lot more flexibility, they also come with problems, possibly leading to paralysis at times for multiple different reasons. One is just because there's a lot of them, which is a little bit overwhelming. Uh, two is that the functionality of these tools can sometimes overlap on each other. So for example, if you have a particular thing that you would want to do, you could pick multiple of these tools that might be able to accomplish that task, leading to the question of which tool would be the best tool to use for the particular task we want to get done. Three, you might be trying to integrate multiple of these tools into your accounting system. So when we try to stack them together and see how the interplay between these tools will work, that can add a lot of confusion, a lot more kind of options as well. And four, if you've learned accounting from like a textbook kind of situation, you're basically learning a double entry accounting system. Some of these tools, what they're really doing is kind of adding another dimension. So the double entry accounting, you can think of doing on like an Excel spreadsheet in a two dimensional kind of system. And now they're breaking out the data in like another dimension, right? So now we're gonna have basically an income statement with multiple columns. That could of course be quite confusing to first try to grasp just the double entry accounting system is quite complex in and of itself. And now when you add this you know, third dimension that we're going to be breaking things out in that is going to be confusing at first. And then when you look at different options to do that, that gets more confusing. So first, what we want to do is just kind of look at these tools in chronological order for, for the most part as they basically came up. And then we'll get into each of the individual tools in and of themselves, which tools might be the best ones to do for a particular kind of, of thing that you're trying to accomplish. 
and then how the tools might interplay on each other when you might use multiple tools at the same time. Chronologically, the first tool we had was called Jobs back in the old QuickBooks desktop version. When it was converted to QuickBooks Online, they changed the terminology from job to sub-customers. They're linked to customers, as the name would indicate. So in the sales tab on the left-hand side, your customers up top. I've got three generic customers here. If I had a job cost type of system, it's possible that I would have multiple jobs, for example, tied to customer number one. Like if I was in construction, I might have a job doing a patio versus a job building a wall or something. And th those would be separate jobs that I would like linked to customer number one. To make a job or sub customer, I can go to the new button up top and then I'm just gonna name it a number, 400 let's say, and I'm gonna make it a sub customer of customer number one. Now I can make it billable or not billable to the customer. Uh, so I'll keep that as the default and then I'm gonna save it and it shows up as our sub customer here. Now to some degree, this, this concept has been uh, taken over by the projects to some degree in, a, in like a job cost system, which we'll talk about shortly, but the projects are only available if you've got QuickBooks Pro Plus, I think, or above. If you have something below that, then you might be able to do similar kind of things still with a with a sub-customer setting. And you can also use those two things in alignment. So the fact that you have projects doesn't necessarily mean that you're never gonna use sub-customers because you might tie a project to basically a sub-customer. The basic idea here would be that you're gonna assign items to the customer and then when you run reports, you can run reports by customer. So for example, if I go up top, right click and duplicate the tab so I can put a report in the tab to the right, we can go to the reports on the left-hand side, open up a profit and loss. Let's change the range up top from 010123 to 123123, run it. And then I can run it by customer which will break it out up top by customer, which will also include uh, the jobs. It'll give us a breakout basically of the jobs up top. So when we, when we think about the next dimension, what are these doing from a report standpoint? A lot of the times we're thinking about the profit and loss and breaking the profit and loss from a single column document to multiple columns, which will be broken out in this case uh, by customers, which also include the sub customers and then we'll get into classes and and so on and so forth. Now, the, the next thing that happened uh, chronologically, I believe was the class tracking. Now notice that the, the jobs kind of most closely aligned to the projects, the projects kind of, kind of overtake some of the functionality of the jobs. But I think chronologically, the next tool that came in place was the class tracking. So let's take a look at that. You, to do the class tracking, you gotta turn on class tracking. So note that if I open up a normal kind of invoice or something without class tracking, then it won't have this class tracking field in it. And that'll be easier because then you'll have less fields when you do the data input. But if you wanna do class tracking, then you wanna turn this on and you'll have these data input fields, of course. Now, where's the class tracking located? It's in the cogs up top settings on the left hand side under the advanced tab and then you've got your categories both class tracking and location tracking are in the same area but location tracking actually came up a, a lot later it's a lot it's much newer of a function and it's kind of a variant of course on the class tracking so let's first just look at the class tracking here uh, to turn it on obviously you toggle on the class tracking and with the class tracking, you'll be able to assign a class to not only every transaction, but every line item of the transaction. The general goal will be similar to what we saw with the project, with the, with the sub customers. We can run reports, primarily an income statement, but you also have some functionality on the balance sheet to run reports by class, which adds another column of the classes. And then you've got your option down here to uh, one, uh, uh, one to enter transaction and one to each row of the transaction. Now, one of the benefits of the class tracking is usually you're gonna want them on each row, or that's one of the differences between it and location tracking. So for example, 
Uh, if I use that standard default, I'm gonna say save it. And we go into our invoice or something that we're gonna enter into the system. Then you've got your classes field and it's for every line item. So if I had multiple line items in my field, I can assign a class to each of the line items instead of assigning one class to every line item. So, so that's kind of nice. When you then run the reports, you're typically thinking again, income statement reports primarily, although the classes have some options for other reports, you can hit the breakdown here by classes. So now you've added another dimension up top, this time not broken out by customer and project or sub customer, but by class. And so you can see, you can use the classes for some similar things. If you're trying to break out the, the, the concept up top by jobs, for example, then you could assign classes as the jobs and do a similar kind of thing as you could with the sub customers. But you can also use classes, you know, uh, uh, for other things or use them both together, which we'll talk more about later. All right, then that was the classes. Then I think the next thing that came up chronologically, I'm pretty sure I'm not completely sure chronologically, but I'm pretty sure that the next thing was not the location tracking, but rather the projects. So the projects over here, and this is where they deviated and they basically left the desktop version kind of behind because I don't think they have, they, they don't have projects on the desktop version and they added this kind of nice feature in the online version. So if you go into projects, now we can, we can add basically a project. Now the projects you can think of as kind of, to some degree are more advanced than sub customers. It's only available if you have QuickBooks Pro Plus or higher. So you need to have, a, if you're in a, a lower version than that, you might be able to do a similar thing with with the uh, with the sub customers and possibly tags. Uh, but the projects allow you to get this whole separate area tracking by project. So you can open up a project here. I can go into the project and then I can track income and expenses by project tying invoice and expenses to the project. Projects also have a pretty nice uh, integration with the, the payroll. So you might be able to actually assign payroll, which has been some of the, has been a kind of a problematic issue uh, with the, some of the other methods in a job cost system. And then you've got your own uh, project reports and you can track all the transactions uh, by project. So it's, so it's kind of a level up of a job costing kind of thing and then you can run reports in a similar fashion as we did before let's open up the reports again i can run reports over here and a profit and loss and i could run them by customers again and when i run them by customers the projects will show up again that's why it's kind of similar to the to the job cost kind of system because you're going to have the project that you can run that way you can also run a project's report, which is a little bit more summarized uh, of, of a type of report. And then you've got these internal reports over here, which are gonna be run per project. So you can go into your projects over here and uh, go into a particular project and the project reports here and run the reports within the projects. So, so then the, so the projects kind of replace to some degree, the sub customers, however, you might use them in conjunction because you might, for example, want to add a sub customer and then tie the project to the sub customer. So if I was to say that we want to, uh, I'm sorry, a new project, I'm going to go back on over here and say, I want a new project. Then I have to assign it to a customer, but I could assign it to a sub customer. So I might, for example, have customer number one, but then I have a different billing area for this particular job. Therefore, I create a sub customer and then I tie the project to the sub customer. So the sub customer is going to be billed to to the uh, I'm sorry, the project's going to be billed to the sub customer, which is basically linked to the customer number one. So you can see. So so that's how you can kind of use those in alignment. So sub customers aren't completely obsolete even though you're probably going to use jobs uh, if you have the capacity to in a lot of ways that you would have used sub customers before to do a job cost type of system. Okay, then I think they added the location tracking. 
So the location tracking, as you can see, is in the same area we saw before. I'm gonna go to the cog and then the settings on the left. It's in the advanced items down below and the same place where we had the class tracking, we've got the location tracking. So here's the location tracking. Now it's similar to the class tracking, uh, except now it's assigned to every transaction. So it would be similar to the, tr to the class tracking if I chose this option to have one class per transaction. But the cool thing about classes is that you can assign a different class to each line item within the transaction Whereas the location tracking, you're gonna have the whole location uh, assigned to one location. Now the drop down here, you can call it you can call it location, property, store, business. This line item is what's gonna show up when you sort it on the report. So the fact that it says location here doesn't mean that you have to do it by location. You can use the location tracking to break out whatever you want in a similar way as with the class tracking. But the location tracking is actually a little a little less robust in some ways than the class tracking because the payroll, like you have some more limitations on the payroll we'll dive into later. Uh, and, and again, you have to assign it to the whole transaction, but not to each line, on, line item of the transaction. So to me, for most cases, if you still have the capacity to use class tracking, that's probably the number one option you would use because it has more flexibility. If you're already using class tracking and you want to assign another item in a similar way as class tracking, but have a whole different set of columns that are gonna show up on the income statement, then I would go you know, to the location tracking. So for example, if I turn that on and we're gonna say, okay, I think it was already on and I go to the new button and invoice. Now I've got the location, which is I have it called territory up here, but that's the location. I can add a location and I can add a class to the same transaction. So possibly I use these in conjunction. Possibly I have two regions in the country, California and, 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 and um, Nevada, let's say. And I can say, I can tag these to California or Nevada for the entire transaction. And down here, maybe I tag further by uh, department. So it's going to be admin, you know, versus sales or something like that. Or I can just use classes and I can say, what if I have a subclass? And so these are some, again, some different interplays, which one would be better. We'll dive into that in more detail in the future, but location tracking, primarily you're thinking income statement accounts. If I go back on over here, I can sort by class customer or now locations, which is called territories, because that's what I switched it to on the, so it's called territories in here and I can run it. And now I'm gonna get my, my columns up top broken out by territory. So now it's pretty neat because I get my whole profit and loss, which is now broken out by territory, or I can break it out by classes this way, or I can break it out by the customers. So then there's the questions of, well, which one do I want to use the location tracking for? Which one do I want to use class tracking for? Which one do I want to use the, the customers for and whatnot? And then the last one that came along was called tags. And tags uh, has a couple things that are, are neat to it. One is that what if you've already used all the classes that you want and you've already used the location tracking and then you, you want to be able to break out your income statement by some other category other than the classes and locations that you've already used. So you've already, you're using classes for, let's say, the departments. You're using the locations for the actual locations. And then I also want to break out like by sales rep or something like that, uh, or, or by like an advertising project campaign or something like that. I want to tag more transactions and break out primarily income statement accounts by those. Or if you're in a system where you don't have QuickBooks Pro Plus or above, and you only have the, the prior versions, you, I think you still have access to tags, but not to the classes possibly or locations or projects. And therefore you might use tags in a similar way as you would use projects or, uh, <laughs> so that's what, 
So, so the tags, to get to the tags, you can go, one way to get there is you go to the, the tool up top and in the lists, you've got your tags. So here's your tags. And then you can, you can basically add uh, new tags in here. Now the tags are a little bit kind of, uh, I call it like a little wonk here, a little bit funny. Because if I add the tags and I just go to a normal profit and loss, I don't always get the tags over here. I think I've got this ungrouped tags, but all the tags that I make don't always show up over here. But if I open up the reports from the tags area, then I have the filtering options uh, by the tags. So those that's a quick overview of them kind of, uh, but, but notice there's a lot of overlap. So now we can get into ideas of which one would be best for the task uh, at hand? When would we use each of these tasks? And then when we have multiple of them together, then how do they interplay with each other? Because I could run something, for example, by classes, and then I could customize and filter, you know, by territory, which is the location one, right? And so I can kind of play with these two things together. How do they, how do they play together? So we'll dive into some more details on that in future presentations.